Hundreds of people suggested I should have used a conveyor belt to lift the wood flakes into the drying wagon. Unfortunately, that wasn't an option and I probably should have explained why in the last video. This is more or less what I came up with, a hopper that can just fit under the slicing machine and then slide up to the top. So why wouldn't a conveyor do the same job? Well, let's just have a look at them. A continuous belt that goes round two rollers. The bigger the rollers, the better, for ease of use, of course. They work best when they have upright paddles to help move things along. They also need lots of small rollers to support the belt in between. That's fine on the flat, but when you want to lift something up, then you need those paddles to stop anything sliding back down again. And the steeper the slope, the longer the paddles need to be. And of course, if they stick up, then they'll also stick down equally. And those paddles need some triangulation within the belt to stop them flopping about. So ideally, the rollers at either end need to get bigger too. And suddenly you have something that simply wouldn't fit under the slicing machine. No way. So even if I had found the time and money to make this, it wouldn't have worked. And that time and money involved would be significant. The cost of the belt, all those rollers and shafts, at least 20 sets of bearings, lots of framing and something to stop the flakes falling off. Well, I'm sure there wouldn't be any change out of a thousand euros for materials alone. And that's not counting a motor. Yes, in theory, the engine could drive it, but the mechanics involved in connecting that up at the right speed would be really challenging. Not least because the alignment of the engine is at 90 degrees to the way the conveyor needs to rotate. Now, instead of all that, I made something out of two pipes and some scrap and a length of rope. And even then, a couple of people said it was over-engineered. <laughs> you can't win. It was built over a couple of days instead of a couple of weeks and it works. It might never break down and if it does, it could be fixed for nothing. It takes only my effort to make it work. So there are no running costs at all. So there's no question in my head about which was the best option. In fact, I do already have a fine conveyor which was kindly given to me and I would have used that if I could have done, but it's just not long enough for this location. And the paddles are too short to hold the wood on at that angle. Most would just fall back down again. It is a fine machine though, and I hope to use it for something more horizontal soon. And while I'm at it, I may as well answer the other main comment that came up a lot. Why not use the top of the wagon as the thing that tips up the hopper on its way back down? which is a good point. And the answer is, I could if the hopper was traveling a lot faster. As it is, it doesn't have enough oomph to tip over because it hasn't been sliding far enough at that point to gain any speed. Also, perhaps one day, I might not want to tip things into one of those wagons. Perhaps one day, I want to tip charcoal into a different sort of wagon or into a sack or something. So this way, um, I have more options. Anyway, thanks for all the comments and the thoughts, but try to remember that everything I do is on a shoestring, so most options aren't really options at all. I will try to address the obvious points in the videos, so you don't need to. I will do better, I will.